What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to yet another video on my YouTube channel. I don't know if I should add this to one of my how-to videos, but yeah, this is another how-to video on my YouTube channel where I would want to show you how to color grade a light skin subject outdoors using the Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. Mine, I think I'm using the 2021 version, so please try and update yours because it's very important to always use the latest software. Right, and I also want to kill two bears with one stone just because I have been talking a lot about color grading and I've had a lot of questions concerning how to um, color grade, how do you understand you need to put this particular color there and that, and you know what? It's, it's preferential concerning color grading, but there are also some thumb rules which always work all the time. You just need to know how to go about using those particular thumb rules and you will just be one of the best at what you do, right? I have also tried using these particular time rules and it has worked so far for me and I'm glad I, I actually learned them. So photography or art in general, no one creates a new art. We are always learning or working on what someone has already produced. So let's just get into today's video. But before I do that, let's subscribe to the channel first, which is quite important because the more I see an increase in growth on my channel, the more I also want to put out videos just because you motivate me and I also motivate you to grow in this business. So let's help each other as I also keep on learning and sharing my ideas on how I go about my editing, my shooting, my post processing. So please subscribe to the channel. Please turn on the bell notification icon. Please leave a like. Please comment down in the comment section below whenever you have a particular concern about whatever it is I'm talking about. And also at the end of the video, I would honestly ask you to share the video to other friends who you know will also like to learn a thing or two about color grading. So here in Adobe Color, you can access this particular um, interface on your internet. So just have an available internet source. Make sure you type Adobe Color it pops up then you just choose uh, color.adobe.com and you have this here so you have a lot of colors here the harmony rule there are a lot of harmony rules you can go about and i think i have produced the video on how you can use the color wheel uh, or understanding the color wheel when it comes to coloring in photoshop or lightroom or any other post processing software whether videos or pictures so i won't go through all of this all right i'll just go straight to what i want to talk about i am so sure you've heard of orange and teal all right a lot of people produce their images using orange and teal i'm also sure you've heard of aqua and brown these are two color combinations i really like using whenever i am editing or color grading an image outdoors i have that in mind so whenever i'm editing i know i would want to add a bit of orange and teal to most of my images and that ends up at your complementary color right so these will help you show you how you can use color combinations very easily so the harmony between orange and teal this is not orange and teal this is aqua and blue let's do orange and teal right so this should be somewhere here so we have our teal and our complementary color for the teal ends up being this particular orange you're seeing here the reason why you can see this brown is because of this particular color over here right so you realize the this or these three colors you're seeing here are different shades of the teal region concerning luminosity same goes for that here and brown can always be found between red and orange and it always has to deal with the saturation level so orange which we have here and teal which is a good color combination right from the harmony rule when it comes to complementary colors right and if i want aqua and blue i just have to reduce the saturation of the color whenever you move these three points towards the circumference of the circle you're getting um you're increasing the saturation when you move it towards the center of the circle you're reducing the saturation so if you take a look at this the saturation has reduced now we have aqua and brown right as you can see aqua brown aqua brown so different shades of aqua ends up giving you different shades of brown and this is what i wanted to explain to you you can save this you can have this as your color wheel or your color save or your color whatever it is save it publish it or use it to teach other people 
right? So this is name my color theme, you can change it. And this is not what we are about, but I just wanted to show you how you can use this particular color wheel to go about color grading your image. So the time rules, right? After knowing this orange and teal, and doing this brown and brown and aqua, you do realize there are different shades of aqua you can change your image to. In today's image, you'll be using this image I shot some while ago. I didn't produce a behind the scenes, and I'm so sorry for that. I think on that day, it was just an impromptu shoot. I shot this using my Canon 5D Mark IV, the 2470F2.8 uh, Mark II USM lens at 50 millimeter at f4.5 iso 100 and a shutter speed of one over thousand seconds or one thousandth of a second all right first thing i'll do is to make sure i fix my horizon i always want my horizon to be as straight as possible that is why we should start to see don't make your horizon look slanted and i'll also make sure i'm seeing my before and after so that i don't deviate from this the next thing i'll do is to make sure my lens correction is turned on so after enabling profile correction, you do realize the image has gained some um, increase in exposure and all that. Right after that, I shot this using the camera standard profile. So I'll make sure to go into camera matching, then look for camera standard. After changing into camera standard, you do realize there's a bit of contrast, there's a change of color shift and all that. Take a look at it before. And remember our aqua and brown. Don't you think it looks closer to that? Yeah, so you can leave your image like this, but to make it more interesting, you can do more to it. Now, changing the picture profile, you end up seeing more of orange, yellowish vibe on our subjects, but then you don't see that teal you're looking for in the skies, right? So you have our orange, but we don't have our teal, but this is not a perfect orange I'll be looking out for. So that being said, I'll make sure my intent here is at five, right i always like to do that i just don't know why make sure i reduce my exposure i like my exposure a bit darker so that i can get to see the skin more tanned right and also with light skin subjects these modern times um there are a lot of um i think people changing trying to tan their skin that's that's what that's the right term to use they want to tan their skin look they want to look darker just like the dark melanated models which who blames them we have like very nice nice skins right that that's by the way also you're looking at tanning the skin but not too much tanning the skin makes it um, brings out that richness in the skin but the mistake i see from a lot of people is that they tan it so much that you don't really get to see um how close the skin looks to a light skin subject you see a light skin subject turn into a dark skin subject which i always advise against so please don't do that find a better way to fix your image after reducing the brightness so i'll increase my shadows make sure i have some information in my shadows i really like seeing a lot of whites in my image neither do i like seeing a lot of highlights i'll increase my whites too i think this was too much Okay, let's just leave it at minus 30. Right. After that, I really don't want to see a lot of colors in this just because after adding, I'm changing the profile to camera standard, it added more color to this particular image. So if you take a look at this, right, you do realize we have a bit of the same color shift I mean, same color saturation between these two images, just that the hues have been changed. Right from there, I think I would add some lightness into the midtones by dragging from the middle, right? If you take a look, if you take a look at this, I think I've produced a video on how to understand the tone curve. Understanding the tone curve, I'll link it up here, make it a point to go watch that. It's very informative and I won't go into that here, so I'll just increase my exposure here in my midtones and here in the regions so i like to open up my darks too uh, make sure it's a smooth curve a smooth curve right right here i think i've lost a bit of contrast in this so here in my dehaze the dehaze works best when it comes to contrast and colors and that's something i'm looking out for so let me use 
value of six. Right, then I am good to go. Now let's go tackle our color. When it comes to color grading, you have the HSL prone to you. And there's one thing I want to also mention when it comes to color grading. You see this wheel, I think I have mentioned it in my previous video, but I also mentioned it here just because I don't know which one I'm uploading next. Fine, let's, let me also mention it here. Picking this, this here you're seeing here, red, orange, yellow screens, aqua, blue, purple, magenta. When I say I have red here and I have red here, this is what I mean. When you pick up the color wheel, this is a painted color wheel I, I drew in painting. I was having one of my classes. So if you're interested in having a class, kindly let me know. I'll link my Instagram down there. DM me and we'll have a thoughtful um, learning process. So we have reds, oranges, yellows, just like that in Lightroom, right? When I am traveling from red clockwise, I end up back at red. When I travel anti-clockwise, I end up back at red. So whether I move from here clockwise, I'll still end up at red. That is exactly what I'm seeing here. So from red, if I should change the hue, if I should keep changing the hues towards the red, you end up seeing your image to be in this reddish region. Do you get what I mean? So that being said, right, when I want to harmonize a particular color, say I want to harmonize my reds, I want to harmonize my oranges, when I change the hue of the reds into the orange, I will make sure I'll change the hues of the oranges into the reds just because I want these two colors to harmonize. I want the harmony between these two colors. So let's go back here to this uh, image, right? Then I will make sure I move the hue of the oranges towards the reds. Not too much. I'll move the hues of the red towards the orange so that I get a harmony of colors, right? I'll make sure my reds look red. I mean, my reds look like the oranges and my oranges also looks like the reds. I also change the hue of the yellow towards the orange, right? So that I can have that orange I'm looking out for. My main goal is to look out for what's orange and teal. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. The next thing I will do is to make sure the blues, right? The two colors that I, I can change to make the orange and teal is the skin, which is the orange. And now we have the sky to blue. So we will change the blue to teal. And by that, we'll use the hue of the blue here. And I move it to the left. There we have it. So what do you guys think? Orange and teal. You guys think we achieved it? Yes, we did. So this is our teal. But I hate seeing a lot of colors in my blue. So I'll reduce that. Also reduce the saturation of the oranges. And that's off the red. And take away that of the yellows. Make sure the aqua follows. I don't really like to see a lot of greens in my image. The colors I'm not seeing, I'll just take them away. Right? And one thing about Lightroom is that what, what even if you reduce the saturation, when you change the hue, you see the effects happening. So I'll move this. In, in as much as I'm moving this towards the aqua, which is greenish blue, I'll move the aqua towards the blue. That is the harmony of colors I'm talking about, guys. So keep that in mind. Now, let's affect the luminosity. I did mention tanning, so I'll turn the skin just a little bit, and there I have it, right? And I'll also reduce the luminosity of the blues, followed by this and that. Then let's see that of the yellows. It will increase that of the yellows. Now well, we should turn the yellows too. Okay, so let's reduce that of the yellows. And there we have it. So this is the before, and this is the after before and after i feel like the teal is too much so i'll leave it somewhere here then i'll increase the saturation just a little bit so this is the orange and teal i'm talking about if you want to make your image or color grade a light skin subject so we are trying to kill two birds with one stone understanding this and applying this here in lightroom so we have applied it let's do further color grading Right, with light skin, this is a trick I like telling other people. With light skin, always add a bit of teal to the highlight. So when I hold shift, right, the moment I hold shift on the keyboard, 
you end up seeing this particular line. That is telling me that when I drag this, it will just be on the line. And so I'll move this towards the teal region, right? Make sure my blending is at 100%. You want the blending to be at 100%, not 50, and move this towards the teal region. Just take a look at this, how it changes the image. Not too much. So we have it there. We have the saturation at four. Let's take it to say eight. Take a look at how it affects the skin before and after, before and after. So this pushes it more to make it look like um, a light skin subject. But after doing that, you get to see it affecting the skies more. So I would like to change, I'm feeling too much of the teal in the skies. So I would like to change it towards the blues a little bit, right? So before and after, that's beautiful. Then we come back to this and we go into the shadows. We try and add some reds into the shadows. And in the midtones, we do the same thing. And the middle one, try to add some oranges, right? That is one good thing about this particular um, Lightroom. You have the available to you have available to you adding to add colors into your shadows, midtones, and highlights. I think in the shadows, I add some blues instead, you just to tone it down a little bit. All right. So this is the before and after before and after so you see how all these are helping to color grade the image now let's come to the camera calibration and this is where everything i think this is where i get to push the limits of this particular image right when it comes to this uh, when it comes to camera calibration always know that the skin tone falls within the green prime take a look at this when i increase the skin tones of or when i increase the saturation of the blue primary you have a lot of this, right? When I increase the hue, you see your image becoming more reddish. When I send it towards the left, you see it becoming more yellowish, right? So the balance is where everything is needed. Let's increase the saturation of the blues too, so you see that happening. Now reduce the saturation of the red primary, then I'll move this towards this direction and also move this towards that direction. Not too much. Okay. One thing I like about the camera calibration is the shadow tint. Here in the basic, this tint affects the total image. And with um, Canon cameras, you see a lot of magenta and a lot of reds when you're shooting, right? So to fix that, I like to use this. I don't think I'm seeing a lot of reds in this so let's play around it and see what will happen when i move it to the left this is what happening in the shadows when i move it to the right this is what's happening can we find a balance in there i think i'll move it yes this is something i would like to see beautiful just beautiful let's see let's reduce the saturation of the blues and there we have it reduce the luminosity let's see. let's take it away now all the way down let's reduce the exposure to okay so this is exactly how i will color grade a particular light skin image which had shot outside in lightroom you see how we incorporated the use of the adobe color view using the complementary colors also using the idea of the thumb rules where we have orange and teal or acquiring brown we applied the same idea here like we tried using the orange and teal idea but we made it our own by changing the saturation and the luminosity of um, the colors present even some of the hues i think i'd like to increase the highlights a little bit add some white to this right change the hue change the saturation change these lightness values and this is what we have what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this particular edit? Did you enjoy this video? Was it insightful? Was it educative? Is this something you would like to try when you're color grading a lighting subject in Lightroom? Just let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know what you want me to do next. 
when it comes to color grading in Adobe Lightroom and I'll dive right into it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I know, I know you guys learned a lot from this particular video. Don't forget to share this video just so that other people who are also photographers or creatives who are coming up, also content creators who would want to learn something about color grading, something about um, color hue, color balance, harmonizing colors. Just share this video to every platform you have. Support my business, support the YouTube channel. The more you support me, the more I also put out videos just because I always want us to grow together. Thank you once again for watching this particular video. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for turning on the bell notification icon. And if you're new here, don't forget to do anything of any, any, any of those things I mentioned earlier. And please leave me a thumbs up if this video was what you expected. Thank you once again, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.